Hello everybody, welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty. I know it's been a few days since my last video. My channel is a little quiet this month as I have a busy personal schedule, but I am here with the first challenge over at the Counterfeit Kit Challenge group. And this time around, we're talking about the color palette from the inspiration, which was purple, teal, and green. And as you know, I swapped out the purple for magenta. So let's use my color palette for this challenge. I grabbed these photos off the internet of something that I've been um, researching lately, which is adult tricycles. And I know I've been wanting to tell this story. In fact, that bicycle piece of paper was from um, one of my counterfeit kits from probably two months ago now, maybe three months ago. And I'd been hanging on to that piece of paper and today was the day to tell this story. So I did pull that piece of paper from my previous kit, but here I've got my colors from my current kit and I will be pulling out the green, teal, and magenta. And I'm uh, torn between the floral magenta and this kind of watercolory magenta. The floral is very busy, but it has a richer color to it. And I'm thinking it reads more as magenta, but I'm not thinking that I can hide enough of those flowers to kind of cut out the distractingness of it. So I am going to go with the watercolor magenta and keep that as, you know, really a focal on the color as opposed to a whole bunch of pattern that's distracting. So what I'm going to do with these color blocks is create a little banner flag for each photo to sit on. And that is gonna be the structure of my layout. So with measuring that first one that I eyeballed, I'm gonna go ahead and cut down uh, the other two sheets of pattern paper into those sizes. And um, then we'll move forward with this banner idea. All right, with my pieces ready to go, I am gonna, first of all, I'm gonna trim the uh, center of these blocks upwards so that I can, <laughs> I'm indecisive if I wanna do them all three at once or, or mix it up and do one at a time, but they'll most likely match better if I do them all at once. So I do end up doing that, but giving a center slice up the middle gives me a very structured way to add the fishtail section to these banners. And um, that is going to make nice tidy matching banners. All right, now I'm gonna increase the color profile of this layout with the sprays that I chose. So I'm gonna back each of those banner zones with those sprays. And I wanna be a little careful about that because if you're doing tone on tone, you can lose some of your texture and detail. So I'm keeping that in mind as I work towards that. In the meantime, I am matting my photos on kind of uh, using the scraps of the previous um, papers that I used for the banners and I'll just mix and match between the banners so that there's not too much tone on tone going on. All right, I am gonna pop up those photos on some foam adhesive to help that um, depth keep its uh, functionality as I do these tone on tone. So that is one tip. If you're doing a lot of tone on tone, use the depth, physical depth of projects to keep the separation of your layers. All right, I am a little nervous about spraying on my very beautiful bicycle paper that I've been saving for months and months. Um, so I am doing a test run on a piece of plain white cardstock, and I will just add this into my kit as a potential um, element to use in the future. I'm very happy with how that came out. So now it's time for the real go here with my um, bicycle paper. So I am I'm going to mark on here with a little X kind of the center of each of these banners so I have an idea about where I need to do my spraying and I get started with my magenta. Um, I wanted to be sure to kind of spray a, towards the edges and then I was trying to get some drips going on at the bottom and I didn't practice the drips and so I ended up with a blob of spray even though I practiced, I still did it wrong. Oh well, I'm going to blend that in as best I can with my project and it'll all be okay in the end. It's just paper, it's just paper. I gotta let go. All right, so another way that I'm gonna help these banners stand out from their tone on tone sprayed background is by giving them an edging at the top with this darker contrasting paper. I am going to rough up their tails so that I have that physical dimension, like I said, that helps separate things up. 
And those are the tips that I'm going to be using. So I center that first banner and then the other two I'm going to eyeball at a swoopy angle so that it actually looks like a hanging banner. Now instead of hanging these banners on a string or something like that, I am going to choose some paper to create paper strips and then I'm going to do a little ruffled technique with these paper strips. This is something I've done some tutorials on in the past. So if you like this technique, I will link you up to a couple of other projects that kind of feature this, or at least one other project that I can think of <laughs> right at this moment. At any rate, I did search through these papers and try and figure out which one I wanted to use. I decided to go with the B side of that heart paper um, that I used for the tops of those banners because it was a good color contrast. And it, since I've already cut into it, I don't feel bad cutting more out of it. And here is where I'm creating this ruffled banner. I am just folding little notches, not quite accordion folding, but something along those uh, lines um, into this paper. And that's why I needed to piece two pieces together because I'm gonna lose a lot of that length um, to this process of folding. Now, as I glue this down, it is gonna be a little unwieldy because of the nature of those folds, but the nature of those folds also help me take a straight piece of paper and be able to bend it into a curvy shape without it looking forced and wrinkled and crinkled because I've purposefully wrinkled and crinkled it in a way that is more attractive. And so <laughs> hopefully all that makes sense. If you've ever tried to curve paper, um, you know what I'm talking about. Now, I still didn't make it long enough and I have a little flat flap over there at the end that is going to need to be covered up. And so I will get to that later. In the meantime, I am choosing some embellishments to go with more of this tone on tone look. I will spray some of these um, elements that I put in my kit that I knew were purposefully um, there to be sprayed. They are very... Um, mild color palettes that I can alter to my color palette. All right, I am going to start working on the title on this layout. And this is kind of the heart of the layout because I'm doing a three part title. And this is really the focus of what's on my brain now. So because this title is going to be so big, I have to be really careful about making sure I have enough alphas. And I did not in one color, so I'm going to mix and match my colors. All right, this is where I realize that, um, how I realize I can cover up the tail of that um, banner piece. And I'm going to create a little circle and arrow element for each of the areas of my title. And that makes those um, pieces that I, that piece up there that I used to cover that banner tail, it makes it look way more purposeful and not just something that I slapped on the page. Um, so I did outline my titles in black pen to help it stand out more because it is a very light color right next to a similarly colored piece. So I want to make sure that stands out. And then while I had my pen out, I thought, could I outline these arrows that I've cut out of fabric? And if you haven't seen my fabric cutting video, I will link you up to that. And sure enough, this white gel pen did work to outline those area arrows. So that was great. I finished off the other two areas of my title, outlined my title letters with the black, put my circles and my arrows, and did my um, all my pen work. I am writing just one little note under each photo because this is about choosing which of these bicycles will be the best fit for me. And so I talk about the affordable one, the rugged one, and the, just the cute one. <laughs> and I was about to finish off this page and, and take um, pictures, or rather I already did take pictures of this page thinking I was done. And as I was cleaning up, I realized I did not grab those elements that I had sprayed and meant to put on here. So now I'm trying to make them fit. <laughs> and luckily I found places for all that stuff to tuck. Now, the one that I had sprayed with the spray that's kind of a tealy green, um, it turned out more teal than green. And so I did re-ink that one in another color. But that will finish off my layout and uh, I will leave you with these close-up pictures. I hope you enjoyed seeing my process and um, 
trying some jumbo three-part titles on this layout and the rest of my journaling went around the edge if you notice that there. All right, that is it for this time around. I will be back a bit later with some more videos for you. Until then, have an artful day.